synthesis and energy flow. Challenge, invasive species. By Miss Sherbin. So let's begin by talking about the sun. The sun is the original source of energy in an ecosystem. We can trace back all energy an organism gets back to sun. And this is because of photosynthesis. Photo means light. And synthesis means to combine. Photosynthesis is a very important reaction. Photosynthesis is the process in which producers transform light energy to chemical energy. The chemical energy is stored in the bonds of sugar or glucose. Photosynthesis can be also represented in a chemical equation. Carbon dioxide plus water yields sugar plus oxygen. Now, if you notice, the arrow has light over it. This is the energy that fuels this reaction. The light energy is transformed into chemical energy and stored in the bonds of glucose. Now, who photosynthesizes? Producers. Producers include plants and algae that photosynthesize in order to produce their own food or glucose. Now, in this activity, we will discuss two types of producers. Producers that are a native species and a producer that is an invasive species. Now, native species are species that occur naturally or existed for many years in an ecosystem. They are part of a balanced ecosystem. Whereas invasive species are something that is not needed and tend to spread widely in an ecosystem. And they can easily disrupt the balance. In this video, your challenge will be to examine how an invasive species of producers could affect the energy flow into and out of organisms in an ecosystem. So let's examine an ecosystem in Alaska and examine a food web. Now in a food web, you may remember there are arrows. These are called energy arrows and they represent the flow of energy from one organism to another. And we get energy from other organisms from consuming them. Other organisms, like producers, get energy from the sun. In Alaska, there is a producer called the willow. The willow is a native species, and it is a very important food source for the moose. Also, it's important food source to the snowshoe hare. Both rely heavily on the willow to get energy. The snowshoe hare is a herbivore and prey to the red-tailed hawk, which is a carnivore. It's also prey to the wolf, another carnivore. The moose, also a herbivore, is prey to the wolf as well. Now, in Alaska, there's an invasive species called sweet clover. It came from Europe and it disrupts this food web. Both the sweet clover and the willow both like sun because they need to photosynthesize. The sweet clover is out competing the willow seedlings because it blocks young willow seedlings from getting light and takes over 
the space where the willow grows. Hence, the willow cannot photosynthesize and get energy from the sun, so its population decreases. Now, remember, there's two organisms that rely heavily on this for food, which includes the snowshoe hare. The snowshoe hare has nothing to eat anymore or consume, so its population decreases. Now the red-tailed hawk has nothing to eat, and it doesn't get any energy to live and survive, so its population decreases as well. Now the wolf still has moose to eat, but the moose has nothing to eat because it cannot eat the sweet clover, and it has a decline in its population as well. Now the wolf has nothing to eat. And even though it's a carnivore and doesn't eat the willow, its population declines because it has no food to eat either. So one plant could affect many different organisms. Try these problems. Use evidence from the food web to answer the following writing prompts. Number one, explain how energy flows from the sun to the hawk. Number two, explain why the sweet clover population increases rapidly in Alaska. Number three, describe how sweet clover affects the energy flow in the ecosystem. Pause, and when you're ready to resume, we will practice some 8th grade science exam questions. These questions come from the Intermediate Science Exam in New York. Base your answers to questions 1 and 2 on the diagram below and on your knowledge of science. The diagram represents an ecosystem. Number 1. Identify one producer shown in the diagram. Number 2. What is the original source of energy for this ecosystem. Feel free to pause and resume when you're ready. Okay, number one. Identify one producer, and there's more than one, so here's the acceptable answers. Allergy, green plants, grass, and trees. Only use ones that were labeled. And the original source of energy in the ecosystem is the sun. So let's try a second one. Base your answers to questions 3 and 4 on the diagram below. The diagram below shows a food web for a community. Number 3. If the grasses die during a summer drought, the grain population would most likely decrease, increase, or remain the same. And be careful, remember, it's the grain population they're asking about. Number four, very similar question. If the grasses die during a summer drought, the owl population would most likely decrease, increase, or remain the same. Pause, and when you're ready to resume, we will discuss. So, the grain population has the same predator as the grasses, the grasshoppers. So it's going to decrease because the grasshoppers are going to eat more grain now that they can eat the grass. The owl population 
also eats the grasshoppers. And the owl population is going to decrease because there's less grasshoppers. Now, that was pretty easy. Let's try a high school level question from the Living Environment Regents. In a particular ecosystem, squirrels make up a large portion of the diet of coyotes. A fatal disease in the squirrel population begins to reduce their population over a period of months. Which graph best represents the expected changes in the population size of the coyotes and the squirrels? Take a second to pause and play when you're ready to go over the answer. If you notice, the squirrel population has a solid line and the coyote population has a dotted line. Now there needs to be more squirrels than coyotes to support the coyote population. So only options one and two work. However, question one has a rise in the coyote population, which doesn't make sense since the coyotes have less to eat. 